Uh, I would like to call upon uh, Dr. Manish Modani. I'll just introduce him formally. I was going through his LinkedIn profile uh, the other day for uh, generating the content uh, for his uh, 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 introduction. And I found out that he uh, has a very great profile when it comes to supercomputing and uh, HPC. I mean, he is a, a doctorate uh, from IT Delhi, and on top of it, he has uh, he has done he has done his doctorate in 2007, and since then he has been working in various industries, and he has started his career with Gray, right? Who they are the people who defined supercomputing when nobody knew about it. So yeah, please welcome Dr. Manish Pandani. What is? Good afternoon. Uh, welcome everyone. Welcome to NVIDIA. Happy to host you. And thanks organizers for giving me a chance. Um, if anyone has any difficulty here in hospitality, please let us know. <laughs> it's a, we are happy to host you here. Um, just one thing, I hope you all know about GTC, but if you know, then you should register. You will get more of what we are talking to. You will get more. Uh, I would like to start with one video, you could take please, <coughs> just to show that I can act also. <laughs> <coughs> Weather is a hidden layer of insight that can predict how we feel and the decisions we make, the foods we crave, and how and where we satisfy our appetite. We drink more fizzy drinks when it rains and eat more yogurt when it's windy. Indoor paint sales increase when there is above the average wind. Hand and body lotion sales increase when there is no cloud coverage. Auto gas sales spike when temperatures are colder than average. Arthritis and COPD can increase on specific days. You can get an advance warning and not miss medication. The weather come. So this video just I wanted to show that this is also because of GPU. I was in IBM before joining NVIDIA and uh, there they used to make weather. Sorry, I should speak here. So there they should use to make weather forecast. They acquired the weather company weather.com. So if you do on Google weather search, first result comes from weather.com. IBM acquired that company. They just wanted to show that since this is GPU community, and I'm sure these weather models now are going to be part of LLM soon, because weather impacts every domain, right? So soon it will be part. So because of GPU, the majority of the weather model what we get the forecast in india we get four times in a day because their model can run even on supercomputer four times in a day and we get for india around nine kilometer resolution so six hours is temporal scale and a nine kilometer is spatial scale ibm on gpu enabled model they could do three kilometer resolution all, all over the globe and every hour so that was the GPU, that is the GPU capability which is enabling and entering into day to day. Now. So with that, let's start today's topic about quantum. May I know anyone uh, here about quantum computing or how to start? Just want to check. Shall I start from basic? Or going basic, basic. Basic. Okay. Sure. So let's start from something basic. We we'll try to cover whatever time permits. Otherwise, we don't have time. Um, Okay, so this is something I took from TED Talk. It's a simple game. I start with a game. Uh, we flip a coin, then uh, one has to play. Then we say to make computer win. Today is the computing era. I kept computer's last play. And then if head comes, then computer wins. If tail comes, 
user win. Simple game, right? Flipping the coin one by one. If we do normally, we say it's a 50-50% chance, right? And that was the outcome. In classical sense, what we get, right? Uh, keep this example in mind. I'm coming back with this. Uh, but let's talk about what happened in the quantum world. Everyone win the Nobel Prize because that time whatever they did it was the innovation and new thing. But later on the things change. So how it start is every uh, initially Einstein said that light is made of particles, right? And there he won the prize, Nobel Prize. Later on we figured out no no it's a wave-like uh, behavior. It's a particle plus wave. So finally what? What we are doing with the quantum computing, I won't go much theory in that, one can read. What we say, unless you observe every particle at subatomic level, they behave like a wave. But when we observe, they behave like a particle. When you are observing, then it's a particle. Otherwise, they behave like a wave. We can take one example. Uh, DDLJ movie, everyone aware? So I take one example from there. Initially, if you see the first few scenes, Amrish Puri sir was coming and entering into the home. Farida ma'am and Kajol ma'am were dancing. As soon as he entered in the home, the bhajan started and they were behaving like a normal home. Right? All they call that. So now think about when Amrish Puri sir walking inside the home. Inside, there could be any state. Kajol ma'am was sitting, dancing. Farida ma'am was cooking, not cooking. Anything could be there. Unless he sees something, Anything can be there, but when he sees, he finds particular state. That is the example what Schrodinger gave. You might have heard the Schrodinger cat example. So it took me time to understand that, but that time I saw DDL and then I understood very <laughs> quickly. <laughs> so Schrodinger, what he says is, uh, again coming back to subject, he says a cat in the box, unless you see inside it could be died, it could be sleeping, it, should, it could be awake. Unless you see it, you can't know or you won't know that what it is and which state it is. So same thing, when we observe, we get a finite value of anything. If we do not observe, things behave uh, like they, they, they could be in any state. And those features are being used in quantum computing, right? I might be going a little faster, but uh, yeah, I can go deeper also, but I don't want to make it boring for first timers. But that is the feature being used for quantum computing. I will compare again with the classical. But with that feature, if I play the game, whomsoever play the last, he wins the game. The 3% is software error. So otherwise, every time it will win. How it will win? What we are seeing in the classical world, everything is either 0 or 1. It's a clear right? in one state, either it will be head or tail, right? In quantum world, we, what we say, it will be in fluid state in between. If we observe, depending on the probabilities or logic, it may show as a head or tail, right? So what, uh, uh, means everything is in fluid. Uh, another example you might hear for quantum is when we flip the coin, we, in classical, we can represent either head or tail only. When it rotates in between a state, it is difficult to represent in the classical computing. The quantum helps there. It represents all the state when it goes from bottom to top and come down. All the state, the fluid state can be represented by quantum. That's where the quantum comes into picture. Right? So again, closing on the example side, what happens? Finally, computer has to play, and computer now always had wins. So he know he remains in this fluid state. Whenever finally it comes, it, it gets ahead. Hence it is winning. So if we have the logic, suppose in a room uh, one is dancing, and we know that in dance one need to reach that corner to get the better result. We should play a music like that, that when music ends, it should reach there. And that's where people are trying with the quantum computing. With this fluid state, they're trying to get the better answer for our day-to-day -day life problem. Right? That's what it is happening. So, question quickly. So, is it like it's trying to optimize the game, but in earlier case it was stochastic variable, so there was no control of the player or computer on the toss of a coin, but here the computer is controlling uh, or maximizing something. Give me two minutes, I'm coming. Uh, 
Uh, quantum has few properties. This is basic property. With that, there are two, three properties. I come back. Right? You mentioned this. Yes. Just to, would like to give what kind of computers are being made. So one thing, quantum bit is known as a qubit. What we say classical is bit, quantum is qubit. It is particular excite it is state for a subatomic level, which we need to generate, and then with that, someone has to work on that. There are very, it's a very initial phase. If you, at my age level, you might have heard that that time we need to write the code even for FP64, no libraries were available. I'm quite old in that sense. So we wrote that programs that before that we need to write the circuit also for the coding. And it is the same state now. The quantum computer, one side, hardware side also, no consciousness. There is a superconducting, there is an iron trap, there is a diamond. There are various kind of qubits are coming up. Everyone has their own merits and challenges. So the compute side, the work is going on. Hardware is coming up with their own pace. So that is one thing going on. In India, particularly, you see the computing side, there is many work going on. Um, TIFR, ISO Pune, they are bringing up a superconducting based computer. Iron trap also, TIFR is trying. Similarly, other, uh, other options are also being tried in India. But we are around 5 to 10 qubits, 25 qubits around. Uh, globally, IBM has come up with a 1,000 qubit system already. Google announced some time back, but now silently they are working on something. Uh, somewhere others also catching up, but no one has proven that one technology will win the race. Still, it's an emerging. Right? Let's talk about today's computing side more. Uh, these things are going on. So the, these, um, why quantum computing? One may still ask that why quantum computing? Why we should work on this? So there are a few key uh, distinguished features of quantum computing or qubit. First, as I said, um, bit is always either zero or one, whereas qubit could be superposition of two state. And depending on the probability, we generally get probable answer in the quantum computing, like our machine learning and deep learning. And depending on the which one gets better, we get that. Again, I would say the key is, unless you measure, it will be in fluid state. When you measure, it could be in one state, which either will be zero or one, something like that. Right? Now the third, the another key feature is entanglement. And this is, again, saying like, I do I still do get if I am very much bothered, my mother calls me, how are you? So these, or, uh, we say the Judua movie or any other movie, one, one guy was getting beaten up and other is feeling. So we... <laughs> I have a question. So, so bit, you said the beat, it will be the largest at the bottom level beat twice, right? At the beat twice. Yeah, please move, continue your question. Yeah. Yeah. So, So qubit generation is totally different than bit. It's a totally different technology. What we say, the quantum computing is and classical if we compare. So one is candlelight and another one is this light. Totally different. Hence these two are different. To make analogy with the current thing, we try to make bit and qubit some relation. But this is totally different technology, totally different technology. So, but the difference, since we understand bit to, uh, in quantum sensing field, if there is a sensor at one place and one other sensor may be 100 kilometers away, some behavior we observed at one sensor, automatically we can see the impact at another sensor. Now the immediate question comes, how quickly this information passes? Right? Is it more than the speed of light? And how much distance it can travel? What we say in universe, things are connected. The speed of light is the fastest. No one is saying that, that we are waiting. But things are connected. So what feature when we are observing at one qubit, it will be there on another qubit. Right? And with this entanglement, what happens is we need to do compute only on half of the qubit or one fourth or so on. So, on. so our compute also saves. Um, with that, now one difference comes. And with the number of states being represented by bit and qubit. A bit represent, if we have one state, one bit we require. But qubit can be represent two. If we take two bits, here only two states represent. 
here it gets four because all are entangled. Similarly, if we have five state, uh, five bits here, we have only five state. Like five coins, if we are working together, only five heads we can take, or five tails we can take, or three heads, two tails we can take. But if we take five qubits, we can take their 32 combinations. So that's the difference what we have with the state. In weather, if we take last 40 years data, we have around, around one trillion different states. So one trillion bits required versus we need hardly 30 qubits. So that is the compute side what we are going to see the change. It's an emerging field. Yeah. Does our degree of sophisticity affects the bits? Suppose you have very random readings for the weather board. Does your qubit Yes, number of qubits. Number of qubit affect. We take all the scenarios. Suppose uh, we are saying the flood is coming. So uh, in quantum sensing field, if there is a sensor at one place and one other sensor may be 100 kilometers away, some behavior we observed at one sensor, automatically we can see the impact at another sensor. Now the immediate question comes, how quickly this information passes? Right? Is it more than the speed of light? And how much distance it can travel? What we say in universe, things are connected. The speed of light is the fastest. No one is saying that, that we are waiting. But things are connected. So what feature one we are observing at one qubit, it will be there on another qubit. Right? And with this entanglement, what happens is we need to do compute only on half of the qubit or one fourth or so on. So, on. so our compute also saves. Um, with that, now one difference comes. And with the number of states being represented by bit and qubit. A bit represent, if we have one state, one bit we require. But qubit can be represent two. If we take two bits, here only two states represent. Here it gets four, because all are entangled. Similarly, if we have five state, uh, five bits here, we have only five states. Like five coins, if we are working together, only five heads we can take or five tails we can take, or three heads, two tails we can take. But if we take five qubits, we can take their 32 combinations. So that's the difference what we have with the state. In weather, if we take last 40 years data, we have around, around one trillion different states. So one trillion bits required versus we need hardly 30 qubits. So that is the compute side what we are going to see the change. It's an emerging field. Yeah. Does our degree of sophisticity uh, affects the bits? Suppose you have very random readings for the weather board. Does your qubit um, yes, number of qubits? Number of qubit affect. We take all the scenarios. Suppose uh, we are saying the flood is coming. Uh, the, uh, the nature is always in complex numbers. So that is another advantage coming with quantum. Um, how many qubits we need? Ideally, as I said, to see the advantage over classical, we need 1,000 qubits. Again, the qubits, what we need is, uh, these qubits can be erroneous with the environment. The qubit works at particular temperature. Generally, for superconducting, we need minus 273 Kelvin. So if there is a disturbance in the environment, then qubit gets erroneous their decurrency happens, they lose their state. So once you excite, then you need to make them work for your logic. But before that, they lose their state. So we call it as an erroneous state. Ideally, we need 1,000 qubits only. But say IBM 1,000 qubit uh, computer now, how many good qubits are there, we still are evaluating. They could be RT30, could be 100, but not more than that. So that's where we say the near-term error is quantum um, uh, near term, what we are seeing these four domains where we may see the major advantage and where the path optimization and now we are working towards quantum machine learning side. There we see the advantage where probabilistic things are making more progress. One good question on the previous table. Yeah. It still sounds like to, uh, similar to traditional information theory representation, right? Log of one over the probability of information representation. So how does it relate? 
from information theoretic perspective if it's longer answer we can take it later but i think we can take later yeah but there is some information theoretic uh, uh, kind of uh, explanation to these things yeah there, that is there we, we can work on that sure but major advantage what we want to show there is three key features superposition entanglement and the number of states it represents so where i was coming if i get 30 good qubit and i get good logic last 40 years weather scenarios i can account in one go and i can make current okay. but then that logic has to develop scientists are working on that it's a very initial stage for quantum computing so these are the key domains right now where the work is going on as i said so uh, uh, one is uh, the drug discovery side what we are expecting it will give the because here we need to find the minimum energy of a particular um, molecule and that with the iteration we figured out in the current classical that should be reduced and we should see the advantage here same with the path finding or logistic optimization and all where many scenario has to be accounted for and that's where we try we see that that may be helpful and similarly machine learning many things are happening now generative ai is also uh, bringing so various scenario when we want to account for in one go that helps uh, other thing this generative ai may help here also because what circuit we make in quantum computing which gives the less error and more optimal thing that scenario is helping here in general um, this is the evolution where we are in i uh, just want to show that nvidia system what you are using right now for your machine learning or generative ai same can be used for quantum simulations what we are doing now no need to go for any other hardware we have the software which can be used that is one second what we see over the years um i, I won't go the evolution everyone knows but now we are seeing after a couple of years it's a time for quantum computing so be quantum ready and we are providing that ecosystem for that right? so one thing is whenever new thing comes we do the simulation like we go to maruti driving school and we do the first time in the simulated environment then we go on main thing actual quantum computers are not there hence their simulations are happening on classical computer right so nvidia is providing a framework or container where you can do simulation on this system second what we want to make you the quantum ready so future what we are seeing is part of the application will run on classical part of it will go on quantum like right now what you will do for gpu computing part of the application runs on cpu remaining it goes on gpu same it will the application part of it will go on gpu so we are having that framework where one can write the code there right now right now it may be running on the classical system but tomorrow whenever quantum computer will come automatically the part of the code will run on quantum computer so that's where we are uh, on it. This is our ecosystem, NVIDIA, where we have partnership with all the uh, hardware providers, software provider ecosystem, and it is growing day by day. Right? So this is what uh, first thing for application code side. I'm going a little deeper, like developer always says, why I should write the code when quantum hardware side is no um, no, what you say, consciousness, which one will go? Superconducting will go, iron track will go, and all. Um, the challenge, but future, what we are seeing is the uh, part of the application, as I said, will run on classical. Very few part of 5% or 10% will go on quantum, right? That's what we are observing. Now, there, the major challenge comes is uh, how the qubit and bit will handshake to each other, right? Qubit is totally different and bits are totally different. And there are some standards being made by Microsoft in 2020 and that we are following. So our framework, which takes care of that backend part. So when our compiler works, tomorrow if actual quantum computer comes, it will, their software and our software will get integrated and it will work. So we are making developer life seamless, just they need to start writing their code and they need to start their work. How much time I have? Like that? You can take five, six. Okay. So 
I will go a little deeper and I want to show one code uh, how it written just here. So we have this um, this we call it as a CUDA quantum that is the framework we have which is allowed to any kind of QPU it will be integrated easily right it's in container form C++ and Python it supports so how it looks like if you see the bottom line picture if we have only classical system then it will be like classical simulation right now it will run here but tomorrow an actual quantum computer will be integrated the part of the code will go on quantum computer we have this CUDA quantum container which has the compiler NVQ++ which takes care of Python and C++ and above that the applications layer coming up. Right? Uh, again, we support all these hardware vendors and uh, hardware provider of this. The interoperability, we know on classical, these things enable the application optimization. Um, nowadays, everything is in library form, so I do not know how many works at this level, but OpenACC, CUDA, MPI, everything is being supported. Right? i just show you one code. So, we know this part of the code should go on quantum computer. This part of the code, which is LU factorization or matrix solver, which works better on GPU. So in one code, we can have both. Here, just we need to save the CUDA queue and it will go on quantum. Uh, means compiler knows that this portion will go on quantum. And then this portion will remain on GPU that compiler is available. So if we develop the code, this same code, when we compile on say classical side, when we do not have quantum computer, just we give this flag to quantum and it, com it compiles and run here. If we have the actual quantum computer, we had this IEEE based quantum computer access, there we do, then it provide these results. Results are not matching because simulation is always error free. Quantum computer is still has error, as I shown, uh, said before the qubit lose their uh, currency, there are another kind of, many kind of error, but they are close. But same code, just to do compile time change, you can run. So what we are saying, be quantum ready, develop your code, do not restrict yourself and don't bother about what is happening on hardware side, just start developing the code. Um, um, this is okay, just want to show, in in view of time, just want to show what we are getting the acceleration. So these are the common, uh, one algorithm show that creates more sure and that's where quantum computing is there. When we do our online transaction, banking or anything, they are encrypted uh, uh, and no one can decrypt those keys, right? But what we say with sure algorithm that do the factorization in terms of integer and in classical, it takes long time. We cannot factorize those, but in quantum, due to which show sure algorithm, that is possible. Hence, everyone is worried that when quantum computer will come or these, this will become reality, all our online transaction will become at risk. Right? So this show sure algorithm is very popular. Show sure is a show. Sure. Because of that, quantum mainly started. I simulated that on our GPU architecture. I compared the performance with CPU only system and with our various generation of GPU. This is two years old, so now our software stack further improved. So we may get a speed of, in comparison to classical, we can get up to 300, 400 times the speed, right? So um, with this, I, so I have more time. Uh, then I, I will explain another algorithm and q and side, or should I stop here? Yeah. Stop here. Okay, maybe next time I will take the q and side. Okay. Different things. Yeah. That means quantum is way more faster than. Expectation is quantum will be faster as well as it will be uh, energy saving. Quantum computer doesn't need so much energy what we need right now. Not necessarily faster than that. Faster in the terms 2 3. You also gave that example that you uh, basically uh, encrypt when the and hashing algorithms are Yeah. So they will become basically 3 4 and Yes, they will be, it's a easy to crack the keys with sure algorithm on actual model. What can actually happen if the 
These algorithm will be there. Now what we want, now people where they are going, they will say yes, the post quantum error. There is a research is going on. Now they will do with this. Oh, yeah, two, 512 also we have seen that hashing. Now they are planning to do with the quantum random number generated hash keys. So no one can break that. That's the people are reporting. Quantum computers already a reality or just in the book? So this uh, sure algorithm, it has factorized in real the 35 number, 35 so far. So still it will take time to 512 or up to that level, but it is becoming reality. We are seeing the advantage in portfolio optimization. Banking sector, we are seeing more advantage with quantum. Other segments, they are coming. These algorithms, right? Star algorithm, which is used in Bitcoin mining. So one will use a quantum computer and that means that's a threat. Everyone is worried on that. Work is in progress. Those problems can be solved in just a few seconds. That's right. That's right. So major advantage in various scenarios you get in one go. And with sure algorithm, you can find the prime factor. Yes, please. One thing for com uh, algorithm side, there are various algorithms already there. Like HHL is to solve the various kind of matrix in quantum. So work is going on. What happens right now? These algorithms are made for smaller qubits. When we do transpilation, transpilation is one thing. When you generate your code, you apply some gates in the quantum. I did not go deeper today, but there are gate level coding one has to do. Then the transpilation allows to you convert those gates into the gate what you are available in your uh, with your compiler. 
it is taking a lot of time for 30 qubits, 40 qubits. So there are challenges. Day by day, people are overcoming, and the things are being proven. So, but there are enough algorithms there on quantum side. Now, coming back to classical side, the problem with the, to prove the quantum supremacy, I would say is that classical is, uh, the speed is not fixed. Now, with this transformal or with the new kind of GPU, always the speed is going up. So quantum is catching at this level, this speed goes higher. So think the race is on, but I'm sure when this we reduce the errors and other things with the quantum, certainly we will be at par and we will see the application which is taking advantage of quantum. Apart from the security as well as the, uh, the other part that we spoke about, the impact of quantum computing, which is explained by the AI and the security aspect. Any other top four? Path, path optimization. I mean, because there we need to take various scenarios how the uh, ship should move or how the truck should move. Yes. There I'm seeing the first thing. Okay, I think we can take the other last questions. Last questions. Okay, last one. Very interesting and thank you, Dr. Manish, for explaining this in detail.